In this video, I'm going to have a go at taking out the injectors and the injector rail on this 280SL M110 engine. We've started off by just disconnecting the fuel pressure regulator. We're going to have to also disconnect the cold start valve here and there's one return line and then there's some tricky little nuts that we need to undo. The fuel injectors are held in place by these metal brackets here and the brackets are held on by a 30 mil nut just there. Now that 30 mil nut is quite tricky to get to. And what we're gonna use is a ratchet spanner with a flexible head like this. So it's at quite an angle. I'm gonna hold the bottom of the ratchet spanner on and I've already cracked it loose. And you can see that actually once you've cracked it loose, the angle of this ratchet spanner allows you to get that off without too much difficulty. It's almost impossible to get those nuts off without dropping them into the engine bay. So I'm just gonna put this neodymium magnet onto a screwdriver and just turn the nuts the last few bits and the screwdriver should hold that nut, stop it falling. To get that washer off, I've just got a big neodymium magnet there on the side of the screwdriver. I finally managed to get that fuel jumper pipe off. I don't know if you'll be able to see that there. You can just see the fitting of the fuel damper, but that is the last pipe there that we need to get off. And you can see that none of these fittings are fuel hose clamps, which is one of the reasons why we want to take that off. The other side of the fuel damper is connected to the um, inlet fuel line, I believe. Now, in theory, now that we've removed those three nuts holding the clamps on, we've removed the fuel pressure regulator, one of the hoses off the fuel damper underneath there, and the cold start here, we should, in theory, be able to just gently wiggle this entire fuel rail out. To make my life easier, I'm gonna take off the four nuts that hold this bracket on, and I think I also need to take off this pipe here and possibly this pipe here to give me slightly better access. So we'll start off by taking off that uh, air hose there. Okay, we're taking that fitting off. We'll probably replace these rusty clips anyway but these um fittings although they don't look too bad they lose their elasticity after a while and they're supposed to be um vacuum fittings that will give us slightly more room here like so to get that clear we're using a little 10 mil ratchet spanner just to get these four bolts done it's worth noting that the bottom one there is actually the earth strap for all the injectors so when you put it all back together just remember where those injectors this one here where they all go we got those four bolts out and it's amazing what you discover when you start taking a car to pieces this should have a gasket here i don't know what's happened to that gasket but it's all falling to pieces so we'll end up having to not just clean those surfaces but get another gasket it's another example of those five minute jobs turning into days i think what i may do i don't want to be wiggling this about and have a risk of damaging the end of the projectors. I may just separate this here if I can and then just take this first set of injectors out. Now, in theory that piece should just lift out which it does. Well there's the first injectors you can see how the rubber seals here are perished. You can also see that the pencil caps are missing on here. I don't know if they're fallen off when we took this out. I know on earlier models, on some models, they didn't actually have pencil caps. So we're going to take this back, de-rust everything, clean it, and probably send these off to Mr. Injector to test. Now it is a good idea if you're doing this to get yourself a set of silicon bungs so that you can bung up the injector holes and spark plug holes or any other holes, fuel lines, etc. while you're doing this job so you don't get dirt, grit, etc. down the tubes. It's really important that you do not damage those injector tips when you take them out. So to get everything out of the way, I'm now going to take the injector harness here um, underneath and get that out of the way and just snip this cable tie here, hopefully without snipping the wires. So we managed to carefully thread this part of the injector through. Now on this car here, this injector actually, these injector wires actually plug in here and are, by the looks of it, 
a totally separate part of the harness. I don't know if that's an afterthought, but um, that'll allow us to repair this wire or even replace this section of the harness much, much more easily. Probably the easiest thing to do, if you know that you're gonna be sending your injectors off anyway, is to cut the hoses so that you do not risk damaging the tips trying to wiggle this thing out. Oh, there we go. I was kind of dreading taking these injectors out because I knew it'd be tricky, but I am glad I did because if you look at the injector seals, that one there, for example, is the only one that came out. You can see that they're completely knackered. And of course that's gonna be sucking in air and you will never get the car running right if you have got vacuum leaks. The other thing you'll notice is that there's all sorts of bits of hose clamp I'm not even sure that's proper fuel hose there but the fuel clamps the hose clamps definitely aren't proper fuel clamps and I wanted to actually get in there and replace those these little some brass ones at the end are actually the genuine Mercedes fuel clamps which are no longer available actually sometimes these jobs go on a lot longer than you ever think so it is important to plug up all the little fuel lines and holes and obviously definitely the injector holes I would also advise you to put all the nuts and washers back where you got them from so that if you come back to this job in a week, two weeks, a month, a year's time, you're not wondering what happened to the washers or the nuts or which go what goes where. We'll be coming back with a vacuum cleaner and cleaning all of this up before installing new injector seals, new stainless steel washers, nuts, bolts, etc. We'll be taking this section of the wiring lube away and replacing all of these boots and plugs and possibly even replacing or making up an entire section. Can't imagine it would be that difficult if we can get hold of the right wires. Um, as I say, this is actually plugged in down here, so it makes it quite easy just to disconnect the part of the wiring harness that's involved with the injectors. Having taken the fuel injectors out of the car, I'm now going to test whether any of these fuel injectors leak. I'm going to flow test them as well. Now, now we're not gonna be able to do this properly like a proper fuel injection place would do it, but what we'll be able to test here is whether there's any drips from these fuel injectors. We'll be able to see whether the fuel injectors are producing a nice even spray pattern. And we'll also be able to get an idea of whether the fuel injectors are balanced by looking how much fuel is sprayed into these little glass bottles. On this end of the fuel rail, we've got an old fuel injector that I know doesn't leak and we're just using that to block it off. This end of the fuel rail here has just got a hose curved across it. Hopefully that's not gonna leak. But what you can see is how this is already beginning to crack here. This is off our parts car here. It's one of the reasons why I've taken all of this off so that we can replace all the old hoses with new hoses. We're not going to be running fuel through our injectors. We're going to be running B12 Chem Tool and the advantage of this cleaner here is it is good on the rubber seals. It won't corrode the rubber away. Some carb cleaners do not work well with rubber. We're going to be taking our Chem Tool pouring it into the coke bottle and then pressurizing this coke bottle to 30 psi using this devolt um, portable air compressor and that's going to be replicating the air the fuel pressure that you'd expect to see in a dejectronic fuel system the first test we're going to do even before we start applying any voltage to these efis or electronic fuel injectors is we're going to pressurize the system to 30 psi and the first thing we're going to check for is are any of these fuel injectors leaking and is the pressure bleeding away on our fuel system once we've done that we're going to be connecting a power source to these fuel injectors here and we're going to, that's going to allow us to do two other tests First of all, it's going to allow us to check the spray pattern of each injector. Are they dripping or are they atomizing the fuel? And the last test it's going to do, give us an idea of, it's not a perfect test by any stretch of the imagination, is are these fuel injectors balanced? E.g. if we hold our finger down on the button, do all of these jars fill up equally with fuel or is one injector you know, clogged up, not providing the same fuel as the other injectors, which would cause your engine to run rough. So the first thing we're gonna do is take our chem tool and just pour it into the Coke bottle here. 
Now this is the bottle of Chemtool that we've used before, it's not full. When we actually do the flow testing on the injectors, we'll be using a couple of these bottles in there. But for the moment, we're just going to fill up the lines and just do a pressure test just to see if any of the injectors are leaking. So we're just going to screw that lid on tightly and then pressurise this bottle up to 30 psi. We'll take this bottle, turn it upside down and connect the DeVault compressor to this end. I've connected this up to the top here. I'm just going to connect this up to the bottom valve here. And next up, we're just going to turn our pressure up to, we're going to go 30 PSI and then pressurize the system. This is now pressurized to 30 PSI. You can see that pressure is very slowly ticking down which means that there's a leak in the system now this leak could obviously be coming from one of our fittings here or it could be a drip from one of the fuel injectors so what we're going to do is we're just going to leave that for a little while and see if we can spot any leaks it's about half an hour later and you can see whilst the pressure has bled off a little bit down to about 29 psi there are no drips in any of these bottles here and therefore that tells me that the fuel injectors themselves are not dripping now there might be leaks from some of these connections it wouldn't surprise me because it's a pretty old connections but the injectors themselves seem not to be leaking which is good news so here's our setup we have a variable DC voltage supply putting out three volts and when I press that switch down, the power is connected to the fuel injectors. This section of harness on the car that I'm working on actually unplugs. So it has four plugs here and they're all connected together. So that's the positive. And then it has one bundle of earth wires here. So I've got one wire directly to my three volt supply and the other wire all connected together via this switch here. So when I press that, the um, fuel injectors or that coke bottle is still pressurized at 30 psi we would expect to see chem tool spraying through all of these injectors at the same time now we don't have an awful lot of chem tool in this coke bottle so what we're going to do is an initial test first and then we'll put another bottle of this chem tool in but this chem tool is quite expensive stuff so if you wanted to continuously run chem tool or fuel round what you would do is you'd put a little inline filter like this so that there's no chance that you're putting impurities into the injector so the first test I'm going to do is just I'm going to hit that button just to see if all the injectors are actually spraying fuel so Grace can you tell me which is the new chem tool and which is the chem this tool is the new one <laughs> and that's the, the old one. one that's the one I've just run through the injectors you can see the difference in color there that obviously Clear. Yeah, so the was, chem tool is doing its, really its job, it's getting rid of rust and grit, etc. So here's our setup. We've got the fuel injectors connected to a DC um, power source, 3 volts. We've got our chem tool, clean chem tool, pressurised to 30 psi. When we press this button here, at the moment I've only got three of the injectors hooked up because each one of these injectors that you add, add a little bit of resistance to the circuit. And unfortunately, if you try and do a flow test on six injectors at the same time, this does not deliver enough current to do that. Only five injectors will work at the same time. So we're just gonna do three at a time. So joined by my beautiful assistant, Grace, what I want you to do is start the stopwatch and press that button when I say go. And then when I say stop, maybe after five seconds, stop the stopwatch and don't press the button anymore and while you're doing that i'll be filming three injectors to see what happens okay yeah. one go and stop you ran that for about five seconds and even in that short little experiment that we ran there you can see that there's an awful lot more chem tool in here than there is in here so let's just line those three bottles up so here are the three jars here, and you can see that two of them are identical, but this one has got an awful lot more in. So basically, these injectors are not balanced. We will be sending them off to Mr. Injector, but this is just a visual demonstration of why it is worth sending your injectors off to professional injector cleaning place, because they will, as well as clean these injectors, change the filters, etc., they'll also balance them. 
Now we've got the other three injectors plugged in and those other three are now unplugged and my beautiful assistant is going to for five seconds go. One thing that I'm a little bit surprised at is these injectors seem to be squirting fuel as opposed to atomizing fuel. And here we have all six quantities lined up. This is just for five seconds. Now, when you send these off to a professional injector cleaning place, they will run a constant stream of cleaning through here for considerably longer. They'll obviously also put the injectors into an ultrasonic bath. So you're back flowing, basically back flowing the uh, filters, etc. They'll put new filters in. They will clean all the rust off and hopefully paint them as well. I'm going to finish this video here. All of the injectors from our 280SL seem to be working fine. They could do with cleaning up, de-rusting and also balancing. So we're going to send these off to Mr. Injector in the UK. And while he is doing all of that, we are going to rebuild this section of the wiring harness. You can see that there's no rubber boots on here. The plugs are old and yellow. The wires are hard. Lots of this sheathing is cracked. And more importantly, if you look down there where the actual wire insulation is cracked, you only need two of those wires to be touching um, and that would short out the injector harness and cause you no end of problems. The other thing that Mr. Injector will do, if you can see, these are probably the original fuel hoses here. And if I can just zoom in, you can see that they are beginning to crack just like really old tires. So he will replace all these sections of hose with proper fuel hose and that should be good for another few years. These original hoses were not, do not have the same resistance to ethanol as the modern fuel hose, which is one of the reasons why if you haven't already changed these hoses, these sections of hose on your fuel system, it's a good idea to do so because they will crack. You can see this here is uh, the original hose off the car. It's starting to crack and become brittle. And those little bits of rubber will find themselves in these filters that are in the top of the injectors and start affecting their flow rate. 